Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here. Hope you're happy, healthy and well. It is time for a new book review. Now for the last couple of weeks I have been reading Dostoevsky. I finished War and Peace and there's a review to come through soon about that. And I really loved what I read in War and Peace and I thought I need to get into some Russian literature. And so I read Dostoevsky's Notes from Underground and I loved it. And I've got a review on this channel. If you're interested, you could check my previous video to learn more about that. So I went to the library and the library only had two of Dostoevsky's books. Strange. It was this one, The Double, and also The Gambler, which I'm currently reading. Now I'm going to review this one, The Double. I, I say the word review. I hate the word review. I don't really want to review Dostoevsky's writing because the man was a genius. I am going to review the book simply because of when I read, I actually want to get some lessons out of the books that I read. And I want to, out of those lessons, start reflecting about my own life and what's happened in my own life and how I understand the world and kind of like the experiences that I have in the world. So as I was reading Dostoevsky, there was a lot of things that hit out at me with his writing and the fact the writing is even this one in this particular one was published in 1846 which was published even before my own city was was built and even established but founded is the word but regardless even though he wrote this in um in in the 1800s the themes are still very much relevant today because he writes about human themes. He writes about what people go through, their, their thinking, their torments, their experiences. And so it doesn't matter that he wrote this in the 1800s. All the themes that he writes about are relevant to today in 2023. And in fact, this cover is a picture of a movie adaptation that Richard Ayadi, who is the guy, Moss, from the brilliant awesome English show called The IT Company. He's directed the movie adaptation to Dostoevsky's The Double and I have not seen the movie adaptation so I'm obviously going to talk about this book. I understand that the movie is loosely based on the theme. It's not exactly as it is in so, the book. The Double is about Mr. Goliadkin. Goliadkin is someone who is a very socially awkward guy. We see him at the very first chapter. He's hired a horse and carriage and he's hired some new clothes and he's very excited because he's going to use this horse and carriage to go around town to pretend that he is a lot more, I guess, of higher society than he is already. And he even dresses up his servant, Petrushka. They have this very amusing relationship where he's always flustered, as in Goliadkin, he's always flustered that Petrushka is just a deal. He just does what he has to do because he's just appeasing his master's needs. And as I understand it, the way Petrushka, I read Petrushka, He's someone who is taking the piss out of his master. You know, he's just, he's his own man. He'll do what his master says, but you know, he'll do it because he has to. And Goliadkin gets really frustrated at Petrushka, Petrushka because he doesn't call him sir and, or he just doesn't make an effort. One thing I did like about this book was the relationship between Petrushka and Goliadkin. But let's return to Goliadkin. Goliadkin is a character where he's really socially inept. He doesn't know how to communicate with other people. He, he's socially awkward. He finds it difficult to say things in the manner that he's thinking about them. They come out wrong. He does things awkwardly. So we can understand that he has some kind of a mental health issue. That's what I gleaned from it. Obviously right this, at the start, if someone is having money and having to uh, hire a horse and carriage to pretend that he's someone else, you start to think that there's something not quite right there. There are issues there that need to be explored or that there is something of a limitation that he believes himself in having because he can't connect with society, can't connect with other people, even though he's desperately trying to. So we see Goliad can go to his doctor and his doctor urges him to keep taking his medication. Throughout the story is Goliadkin also goes to this ball and he really likes this young lady called Clara, but he balls it up. He's found walking outside in the snow and rain thinking, 
about why is such a deal and why it doesn't do things correctly and lo and behold someone walks by him who walks exactly like him is like him and in fact it's his spitting image and he gets a shock because that's his twin he sees his imposter twin walking the street and indeed he then he follows him home and he goes into his own home so he they get introduced and he starts to learn more about his Goliadkin twin who he calls Junior and Junior is someone who kind of sits back takes it all in or observes always agrees with him and you think alarm bells and this is at the point of the book where I started to think, is Goliadkin, did he actually really meet a twin? Or is he paranoid? Is he schizophrenic? Is this another personality? But what we also see is throughout the book, the way that people interact with Goliadkin Jr., his imposter twin, is a little bit more amenable and friendly than the real person. So this gets Goliadkin irate, frustrated as well, and angry because around him he sees all people actually pining with Goliadkin Jr. And in fact, even at his work, Goliadkin Jr. seems to get the best jobs, the plum files, uh, everyone likes him, he's well connected with the manager of the company, the you know, the team leader. This then really gets Golly Atkins Senior, depressed, frustrated, anxious, highly, highly anxious, angry as well, because he cannot understand why others can't see the resemblance and can't see that he's the evil twin. He's not really evil, he's just people prefer that twin over Golly Adkin. So this is the point where I start to think, well, okay, this book might be about paranoid schizophrenic person who has somehow put there is another person in the picture, but he cannot see this other person because he's projected himself onto this other person. Hence explaining why others still react normally to this other person. Or it could be that it is really a split personality, that there really isn't anyone there, that, that people are just kind of going with the flow, given that all of them seem to be making fun of Golly Adkin, simply because he is socially inept, can't talk properly to to other people and so people put him on the outer he's seen as an outcast at this point i'm thinking well maybe maybe there isn't another twin maybe this is people just kind of pretending you know going with the flow appeasing him and taking the piss out of him that's the perfect australian slang a lot of people seem to be taking the piss out of golly adkin so these are two elements i start to think about and i start to feel sorry for golly adkin even though He's not a really nice character, but I don't think he does it as evil. He does it simply because he's someone who might have a condition that doesn't help him communicate more effectively with other people in society. And that he has to create another self. He has to create a double self. He has to create someone who's a lot more good looking, positive, amenable, friendly, less socially awkward, has the gift of the gab, can speak with the ladies, can speak with the colleagues, can speak with the boss and feels a lot more comfortable in society. So maybe in his head he's making this other person because he knows he has to be like that in society. So this now then made me think, apart from feeling sorry for him and there's a little twist in the end about what happens, which I do feel sorry for what happens to Golly Adkin because this kind of line of storyline, either someone's got to go, either the imposter has to go or the real person has to go. And I'm not going to say what the ending is, but it was sad for me that that actually happened, but it was not surprising. So I started to think in today's context, if we, if we don't talk about the double self of having to be a different person out in society, because after all, hey, look at us online, look at us on social media, we're being our authentic selves, or are we? Maybe if we don't have that, or maybe if we, we don't have an experience of a schizophrenic, paranoid person, maybe the third aspect 
and the interpretation of this book for me was that in work situations if you are someone who has really good ideas but may not have been able to articulate those ideas to work colleagues and has your work stolen or mis being misrepresented in any way or that you're gaslighted in front of people or by some or having your ideas and your you know your stories your work everything like taken from you or misrepresented stolen or taken by someone else i think to myself that is another way i could interpret this book because in the book goliad can really die try desperately to try and understand why Golly Atkin Jr. was getting the plum jobs, the plum files, when he was experienced himself, he could do the work. But all of a sudden, people preferred the, the one who had the gift of the gab, the one who was better looking, the one who was able to explain things well, the ones who had those connections, the ones who could smile. So I started to really think that this book can also be very relevant to today's work situations. Too often the people with ideas and the great ideas can get gaslighted or their ideas taken from colleagues and claimed by their colleagues as being theirs. That could be one, one lesson from this book. It's really interesting too, as I was doing a bit of research, I'm currently also reading, and this is completely unrelated, Sylvia Plath's Ariel, which is a collection of her poems that she wrote in the 1960s before she died. And these are very, oh my God, they're, they're quite moving, but I'm gonna leave the review for this because they're very intense as well. But as I was reading about Sylvia Plath's biography and about her story, it's really depressing too. I was surprised that she, when she was studying her dissertation thesis was on this book the double and i started to wonder this is really interesting because sylvia plath was married to ted hughes who was also a very well-known poet he was a well-known poet in his own right but there is contention about when she died and how she died ted hughes was violent towards her so there was some domestic violence situation towards her but he took her work after she died and repackaged it up in this collection of poems. So I start to think, wow, really interesting turn where Silva, Sylvia Plath and Ted Hughes, both poets, both very, very good poets, but having this very big relationship tension in their marriage. But she also wrote this dissertation on a double and the double somehow kind of reflected, I assume, what she had gone through with Ted Hughes. So that was my aha moment, my life lesson. Maybe there was a link here. Why did Sylvia Plath somehow connect a lot with the double to do a dissertation on it? And then later on in her life, what happened in the double actually came out in true form and that's where I put the links in where you have people who are so creative so artistic but yet somehow can't express themselves in ways that the rest of society want to know and then in come the people who have the gift of the gab can talk nicely can can sway people are more influential and more connected than somehow somehow society then tend to believe them so that was my little connection it might not be a connection at all but it was very interesting to be reading this and then doing uh, research and finding that she actually did a dissertation on the double which is what i was reading so that is all for me right now. I would recommend this book even though it is written. It is written in such a difficult manner. And it's difficult in the sense that Dostoevsky, at one point we, we read it as if a narrator is narrating what's happening. And then we, we read it as if we are Goliadkin ourselves and we're in, in his head. And just the language just chops and changes all the time. But you know, part of me thinks that I think Dostoevsky did this on purpose, even though it's one of his first books. It was shown that he was a very creative writer. He was a brilliant writer. So maybe this was his way 
of getting us to be in the head of Goliadkin, where confusion reigns supreme. We don't know, we're thinking one thing and then we're changing and doing another. So I think the writing in this is quite deliberate and I'm not sure what others think about that or whether they think it's some, the writer just taking, just taking, I guess, his privilege of being able to write in a different manner. I don't think that's it. I think he's deliberately done it. So we get into the mind of someone who is completely, completely confused and completely beside himself, literally. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Bye for now.